what they say about best laid plans? <laughs> so, you know, I had the whole show planned out for What's Up in Makeup this week. I had all, everything lined up. I knew exactly what we were going to talk about. I hadn't written the script yet, but I had it all lined out, knew what I was going to write up. And then Jacqueline did something that I never would have guessed that she would do. She went over to the Jacqueline Hill Snark subreddit and posted a response to Marlene Estelle and Jen Gerard. Wow. So I'm sitting there on Thursday night, knowing what I'm going to talk about for What's Up in Makeup, being like, okay, well, this is going to shoot to the front of What's Up in Makeup. And uh, yeah, it ended up being the whole thing. So what I'm going to show you today is a special edition of What's Up in Makeup, just focusing on this story and the timelines. I've spent the past 48 hours trying to just organize everything because, because I will tell you, Jacqueline's post is a hot freaking mess. It is all over the place. It is so scattered. And it just took me like seven read throughs even to understand what she was saying. So to save you the brain power, I have invested all of mine into this episode of What's Up in Makeup. The full episode of What's Up in Makeup, what I had planned to post, will be up as soon as possible. So if you enjoy the traditional version of What's Up in Makeup, it is still coming. I have not forgotten about you. Those stories still exist and it is coming. But I realized that this went a lot deeper than I could have ever expected once I started putting the timeline together and I knew there was no way I could do this story justice and that at the same time. So it's coming. But I have so much to share with you with this story. There's so much to tell you. Hang tight. I'm about to jump into it right now. Some quick disclaimers before I start. If you want to skip the disclaimers, timestamps will be down below. First disclaimer, I am friends with Jen Gerard. I am friends with Marlene Estelle. I am not friends with Jacqueline Hill. So that is going to be a thing. But I'm trying very hard to be accurate in this, that the dates are right, that the timeline is right, that the facts are correct. If for some reason I made any mistakes in dates or times or order of things, they will be in a pinned post at the top of the comment section. I did everything in my power to make sure I had everything right. So hopefully there are no notes there, but if there are, they're going to be there because I can't insert them in the video once this video goes live. The other thing I want to mention is there was some question in the actual Reddit thread by the moderators as to whether this post was actually from Jack. Hill. It's 99.9% .9 sure that this is Jacqueline because no one else could have had access to this information, to these screenshots. It's, I mean, we didn't see her typing the thing and submitting it, but it is pretty clear that this stuff came from Jacqueline's phone. Everything that Jacqueline posted matched up with the information that Marlena Stell personally gave me. So I am extremely confident that this is Jacqueline posting. I'm going to put a lot of text up on the screen. I highly encourage you to pause and read in its entirety. I could just sit here and read to you for half an hour, but I know a lot of you don't want that. So I'm just going to put on the screen and summarize for the most part whenever that is relevant. Speaking of that, this is the long post that Jacqueline put up on the Reddit thread. In this long post, she only talks about three things. The first thing is what happened with her and Jen Gerard, And the second two things pertain to Marlena Stell. So let's start with Jen. It's important because like, you know, once might be like an accident, right? You know, twice, you know, huh. But when it starts to become a pattern mm -hmm. and now I, I, it's come to the point where I feel like if I don't say something, I don't do something and it continues to happen, then it's on me. Jacqueline really wants people to know her side of the $250,000 payout email. In the post, Jacqueline admits that the payout sounds absolutely awful, but she feels it's misunderstood and apologizes if the email didn't make sense to Jen. She clarifies that she wanted to end the affiliate payments that she had been getting and instead collect a lump sum of $250,000 as a buyout. That is if Gerard Cosmetics was going to continue to use her name and likeness. She clarifies that if Gerard Cosmetics took her name and photo off of the shades, that no payment was needed. This is really, really important. So put a pin in that. That if Jen Gerard took her name and and her photo off of the Gerard Cosmetics website that the payment would not 
be needed. Then she makes a very strange claim. She reaches out about an active banner ad that she said Gerard Cosmetics was using her name and likeness years later. And I talked to Jen about this and she told me what this was. So apparently there was a company that supported local businesses. They put out coupon books and they just promoted local businesses in general. And Jen at one time had provided this company that was local to them with some photos of stuff from Gerard Cosmetics and Jacqueline had happened to be in them. Now, this company did not tell Jen that they were posting these pictures, any of that of Jacqueline did not. Jen had no idea. They just posted them because they had them. And Robin, who is Jacqueline's mom, remember that Robin is Jacqueline's mom, because I'm going to mention her again later. Robin reached out to Jen and was like, hey, you need to take these pictures down because Jacqueline has disassociated from Gerard Cosmetics. And Jen's like, uh, I didn't even know that this was on there. Uh, the print stuff, I can't do anything about because that stuff was printed before Jacqueline disassociated from Gerard Cosmetics. But the website banner stuff, I can totally take care of that. I've already contacted them and told them to take it down. So that's what that was about. It wasn't a Gerard Cosmetics ad. It was a separate website that just had old information. I'm gonna try to keep the timeline clear for you on this. So these screenshots where Jacqueline is talking to Jen that Jacqueline posted on the Reddit thread were from August 4th, 2015 for the timeline. That's four days after the screenshot that Jen provided about the $250,000 buyout. This email backs up exactly what Jen said on the sesh, the podcast that her and Marlena both went on to tell their side of the story of what happened with Jacqueline. Jen had said that she had tried to end things amicably with Jacqueline and that she wished her the best. In Jen's email that Jacqueline posted, Jen said, that the $250,000 had to make sense for her and her business. Jen says that she feels that Jacqueline has already been fairly compensated and asks how Jacqueline came to the $250,000 amount and wants to know what Gerard Cosmetics gets for that money. In Jacqueline's response, it again backs up what Jen said on the sesh, that Jacqueline says that she feels she has been fairly compensated in the past. Jen says at that point that Jacqueline's name and face had already been removed from the website, but it seems Jacqueline wanted the products removed all together. Jacqueline says that continuing to sell what she calls my products will not be easy for her. It seems like she wanted the $250,000 because she felt like the shades would continue to sell because of her, even if her name was removed from them. So here's the inconsistency here. Because remember in the Reddit thread, she specifically says it was the name and the likeness she had an issue with. But when she did ask for the $250,000, the name and the likeness weren't even an issue anymore. You see what I'm saying? Like that something's not right here. Jen did send me the emails in this thread, but she said there was private information in there that she did not want me to share. So I'm just going to express to you the dates. I did see these with my own eyes. Jacqueline emailed Jen on July 26th. Jen emailed back saying that she removed Jacqueline's face and name. That was July 27th. On July 31st is the email asking for the $250,000. And then August 4th and 5th is when they have the discussion about why Jacqueline feels like she should have the $250,000. Again, I asked Jen, I was like, I really feel like this provides some context. And Jen was like, you know what? I am done with this. I don't want to, he said, she said, or she said, she said, back and forth over and over. Like she just was done with it. She just was like, you know what? I just want to let it go at this point. So what we need to decide as outsiders in this situation, if we even care enough to decide is... Is $250,000 a fair ask for keeping the shades and the names without Jacqueline's face and name attached to them. Jacqueline would no longer be promoting them. She's disassociated herself from the brand, but the names are staying the same. Will that residual effect be worth $200,000? $100,000 for one lipstick alone, that 1995. I have a feeling that Jacqueline knows that that was an unfair ask or else she would have mentioned it in the Reddit thread. Maybe she just forgot. We can give her the benefit of the doubt. We can say maybe she just forgot that that was what it was about. But I have a feeling that it just, she knew that that wasn't a fair ask for just keeping the names without her ever promoting them ever again. And that's why she didn't mention that part in her Reddit post.
So a few hours after Jacqueline posted in the Reddit thread, Jen posted a response, and I'm gonna kind of sum up what she said here for you. The letter is directed directly at Jacqueline, and Jen says that she would accept a genuine apology, but she did not feel like this was one. She continues saying that the email did make sense to her, and that this is not, quote, how you apologize after spending years trying to destroy someone. Jen stresses that the $250,000 ask was after her face and name had been removed. Jen talks about the Snapchat video that Jacqueline had made saying that she was disassociating from Gerard Cosmetics and how, you know, she, we probably could guess why she was disassociating and how she was putting her morals over her money and all of that. That was a big issue for Gerard Cosmetics, made them lose a lot of sales. She also talks about how it made her lose other opportunities with other influencers because Jacqueline was physically going around telling people not to work with Gerard Cosmetics. Jen finishes the post with, quote, you took extra pleasure in squashing me as a punishment for not going along with your program. I am my own person and I would not participate in the awful things you did to others. Your selfishness and greed have hurt myself, Gabby Rose, Marlena, Kaylin, Becca, and too many others. They have yet to come forward, but that is their story to tell and not mine. But you and I both know there are many more. Since an apology is only valid when followed by change behavior, I will wait, but not hold my breath to see it. And that's where that one is left off in the Reddit post. Jacqueline clarified what she felt like she needed to clarify, and Jen is like, you know what? I'm done. This is the end for me on this. So now, let us move on to part two, Marlena Stell. Why am I staying silent on stuff, and why am I trying to make everyone else happy? Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm going to speak what is the truth or, or what I, I feel, and mm -hmm. some people are going to appreciate it, some are not going to like me for it, and that's okay. Uh This section is such a mess. I had to read it like a thousand times to even wrap my brain around like any, uh, to organize this in any way. It was so hard. It was so hard and I needed help. So I did talk to Marlena quite a bit over the last 48 hours trying to sort out all of the details. I have a ridiculous timeline that is a page and a half long just trying to sort out the order of things. But what you need to know about this post, if you couldn't digest it either, is she talks about only two things in this post. The first one that we're going to focus on is the collapse of her collab with Makeup Geek Cosmetics, which is owned, was owned by Marlene Estelle. It is now out of business. In February of 2016, Jacqueline pulled out of the Makeup Geek collab and she posted the emails that she had with Makeup Geek's former chief operating officer, his name is Nick, about pulling out of the collab and the conversation that she had had with Marlena about that. Jacqueline expresses sadness, disappointment, and that she's sorry it didn't work out. She said it was out of her control and that she wishes she could go back in time and do things differently. She knows that Nick will be upset because she knows he's put a lot of work into the club and asks if there's anything she can do for them. Nick's response, he says that in hi hindsight's 2020 and that he's hoping they can still work together in the future, maybe for holiday of 2017. He says he hopes that they're on good terms and seems to be responding with to the anything I can do thing that Jacqueline said with that they would appreciate any love or support that she could send their way. And then he wishes her well. Marlena expresses gratitude for the exposure thus far and backs up Nick in the offer of another collaboration, possibly an eye palette to complement the lipstick she had planned on launching. So you may be asking yourself at this point, if Jacqueline had screwed them over so badly, why are they offering her another collab in holiday of 2017 potentially? We will get to that. I promise you, I will answer that question. But before we do, let's take a sip of coffee because I need it. And let's talk about how we got to this point. What it comes down to is that Jacqueline simply overbooked herself for spring and summer of 2016. Based on the information from Jacqueline, Marlena, and actual launch dates of products, it looks like she had two products launching with Becca in that time period from May to August of 2016. Usually when you sign a contract with a brand, which she did have a contract with Becca, you can't do anything in between collabs and usually for a period of time after. So anything else that wanted to fit into that May to August window would have been out of the question. That included anything with Morphe and anything with Makeup Geek, which were the two other companies that she was collabing with at the time. It is important to note though that the second product which was the split pan palettes that she had planned to launch with Becca did launch in September, not August, but the plan had been for August. 
Now, we don't know exactly when Jacqueline signed the contract with Becca, but what we do know, because I've seen Marlena's emails from her email box, is that she started talking to Jacqueline about doing a collab all the way back in August of 2014, where they had their first conversation in person. I will show you the photo of all of the people that were there together that day when Jack when Marlena pitched to Jacqueline doing a collab palette. Again, this is August of 2014. September 7th, of 2014 is when we get the first official email of Jacqueline and Marlena talking about the details of the collaboration. In the fall of 2014, Makeup Geek sent their first version of a contract over to Jacqueline to sign for the Makeup Geek collab. Jacqueline did not sign it. Marlena says March 20th of 2015, they had a conversation, Jacqueline and Marlena, and Jacqueline insisted on launching the Makeup Geek collaboration in August of 2015. She said her timeline was really tight. She had to launch in August of 2015. So in April and May of 2015, Jacqueline finalizes all of the shades with Makeup Geek and Makeup Geek not having the contract yet, but assuming that it's coming, not having that signature, but assuming it's coming because they're friends, like it's coming they're on this tight timeline like you know what we just we need to order this stuff because we're not going to have the product ready for this August launch if we don't order them now again this is April May of 2015 they only have till August to get it all together and ready to ship so they have to order the product they have to start ordering the packaging also in May Jacqueline says in one of her videos, she signed a contract with Morphe to do the white Jaclyn Hill palette. It was just called the Jaclyn Hill palette, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna call it the white palette with Morphe. Also that summer, July 3rd of 2015, Jacqueline launched Champagne Pop, the original highlighter with Becca. That's why she needed Makeup Geek to go after that, because she was doing the Champagne Pop with Becca, Makeup Geek, the palette would be right after that in August. Also in August, this is the big Napa trip that Marlena talks about. And this was the trip where Jacqueline went outside and made the Snapchat video disassociating herself from Gerard Cosmetics. But that was the previous story. Let's stick with this one. August 19th of 2015, Jacqueline sends an email to Nick. Remember, he's the chief off operating officer over at Makeup Geek. And, he's, and she's like, the price on the Makeup Geek palette is pretty expensive compared to what I'm probably going to be releasing with Morphe. I need you to bring that price down. Jacqueline references this in her Reddit post. So that's why I'm mentioning it now. Put a pin in that because we will come back to that in just a few minutes. So in this time, the Makeup Geek palette just keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed. She launches on in October of 2015, a three pan palette with Becca that included Champagne Pop. In November, Makeup Geek had planned to launch the Jaclyn palette, but it got pushed again. And this time it was push, pushed to March 23rd of 2016 because of the upcoming Becca launches that Jacqueline committed to. See, it is a hot freaking mess. In December of 2015, Nick reaches out again, trying to get Jacqueline to sign the contract and she still doesn't sign it. Then in February, it really hits the fan when it comes to the Makeup Geek and Jaclyn Hill relationship. So they're going back and forth. She still hasn't signed the contract. They have all of the product now sitting in the warehouse. They have the packaging all sitting in the warehouse. Marlena tells Jaclyn that they have over a million dollars worth of stuff. She sends the photos over of all of her stuff. Look, it came in. It's here. All of her specialty shades that she had ordered. Your specialty shades have been sitting here since October. And what's going to happen once they hit the one year mark is they may not be quite as easy to use. The eyeshadows in the pan do start to age and there may be a little bit of a film that forms on top of it. And I want this to be perfect for you. So we really need to launch these by August of 2016. And remember, this is February of 2016. So she's like, we really need to launch these by August. But Jacqueline has put herself in a pickle because she has a bunch of things she signed contracts for, for both Becca and for Morphe. And she can't launch the Makeup Geek collab in August. She keeps communicating with Makeup Geek. It was either her or Robin, I don't have it written down, communicating with Makeup Geek. So on February 1st, they move the launch to May 1st, 2016. On February 13th, they move it again to June 19th. They're still waiting for feedback on the outer box. Like they're still talking about this. And then on February 20th, is when Marlena and Jacqueline have a conversation and she pulls completely out of the Makeup Geek collab. So how does Jacqueline's relationship with Morphe fit into all of this? Because remember, by the time that Jacqueline signed the contract with Morphe for the white palette, 
The products were already being ordered for the Makeup Geek collab. So what happened there? So Jacqueline just completely screwed herself because she's got the back, two Becca launches, one in May and one September. She has Marlena telling her that the Makeup Geek palette needs to launch by August, a month before the Becca. And then she's got Linda over at Morphe saying that she wants August. <laughs> <laughs> which is a month before the Becca. So it's like nothing can launch in August because she's still in contract with Becca. So Morphe and Makeup Geek are trying to get these like, come on, Jacqueline, why we need to launch now. And she's like, I can't. I'm doing stuff with Becca. So what really did happen in this timeline? How did Jacqueline get herself into this mess? Well, if you watched Jacqueline's launch video for the white palette, she said that nine months before the launch of the white palette, she went to Linda and said, this is not right. Finally, about nine months into working on this, we had our palette and I'm like, the shades are perfect. Like we're good. It's amazing. And it was time to go into production. It was time to launch it. And I was like, Linda, you're gonna kill me, I'm so sorry, but I hate this, it's not right. And she was like, wait, what? I was like, it's not right. I know we've been working on this for nine months and that's a long time, but it's not right. And so I went back in, I removed nine shades. It's funny, because it was at nine months and nine shades. I removed nine shades and I completely started over with those nine shades. So this palette was actually, sorry, my dogs were there making noise. This palette was supposed to launch actually last holiday, so long ago. But I just, I got so picky and I just wanted to make changes and I was like, it's just not perfect. I was like, yes, it's a beautiful palette, but it's not perfect. And she didn't question me. She just threw her hands up and she said, I trust your process. Guess what's nine months before the white palette launched? February of 2016, when she told Makeup Geek that she couldn't do the collab with them. Is this a coincidence? I have no idea, but it is very interesting. Let me tell you why. If Jacqueline had launched the white palette as it was with those nine shades in February, March, then that would have been a few months before the Becca launch and she probably would have been fine. So it looks like she had a choice. I can take these nine shades out and put new nine shades in and make this palette exactly what I want and then launch this at holiday. But if I do that, then the Makeup Geek collab is out because she was pushing Makeup Geek past August into the fall season because she had that contract with Becca and she couldn't launch both the Makeup Geek palette and the Morphe palette in the fall and winter of 2016. She had to pick which one. If she was gonna change those shades, she had to pick which palette she was gonna launch. She couldn't launch both. So she ditched Marlena, she ditched Makeup Geek, and she launched that white palette with Morphe. Another reason why she may have ditched Marlena is because she had a contract with both Becca and with Morphe. Remember, she never signed the contract with Makeup Geek. So what you gonna do? So when Jacqueline says, I did what was best for me and for my brand, I feel like that's probably what she meant. She had to ditch the one where she hadn't signed the contract because she planned so poorly between the three brands that she was working with. So what happened at this point? Where were we in the mindsets of Marlena and Jacqueline? Really, everything was okay. Jacqueline thought everything was fine That and Marlena was like, well, we'll figure out a way to sell these shades. It's okay, you're my friend. I don't wanna make you feel bad about it. I wanna keep this relationship with you. So both personally and financially, Marlena didn't want to be mad at Jacqueline. It wasn't good for her personal life or her business life to be mad at Jacqueline. And she was giving her the benefit of the doubt. She's like, well, maybe, you know, this wasn't malicious. Maybe, you know, we're, we're gonna deal with it. It's gonna be fine. You know, we'll figure out other ways to sell it. She came out with the In The Nude palette where she put a few of Jacqueline's shades in. She sold some of the shades as singles. Like she she really did try to put these shades and sell them. But as we all know, she wasn't able to sell enough of them. So remember back a while ago, I told you that Jacqueline talked about two things in her Reddit post. That was the first thing. The second thing she talks about is the dissolving of her friendship with Marlena. What happened after that is after that Napa trip, everything just spiraled. She wasn't talking to me as much and things just kind of went downhill. And then I was like, that's when the little red flag started popping off. And I was like, OK, so are we actually friends or are you just using me to get information for your own brand? Right. So we are going to leave 2016 and we're going to move forward in time to August of 2018. 
18. This is where the text messages start that Jacqueline posted to the subreddit. The first one is when Jacqueline confronts Marlena about talking to a drama channel about the dissolving of their collab. Marlena admitted to me that Sanders Kennedy had reached out to her and asked her what happened with that. Marlena was like, yeah, you know, she had some conflicts in her schedule. It couldn't work out, but everything, you know, it an ended amicably. We're, we're fine. Everything's fine. Jacqueline seemed to think that things were not fine and that Sanders had twisted things around, that had twisted Marlena's words and had made a bigger deal out of it than it actually was. Now, like I had said in a previous video when we talked about Karina Kaboom, there was a group of influencers that did happen to exaggerate things. They didn't always, they, they made a lot of like, this may be the thing. Now, I don't know if Sanders did that in this particular situation because Sanders deleted all of his videos from back then. There's like one video from that year and it's completely unrelated. It's like the Ofer collab with Nikki tutorials or something. It is nothing. It's not, there's nothing from this time. He's deleted everything. So I don't know if he exaggerated in this video. I don't know what he said, but Jacqueline was really upset about whatever Sanders said in that video and was asking Marlena about it. And Marlena's like, I didn't tell him anything bad. In the text messages, Jacqueline seems super stressed because of all the comments convinced that she did Marlena dirty and talking bad about her mom. And she says that she's going to have to film a clarifying video reading emails so that she doesn't quote, take a bullet that she doesn't deserve. And in response, Marlena says she's really sorry to hear that they're bashing her mom and that she hasn't been reading comments and that she never shared about their collab ending other than it ended well. But what Jacqueline didn't realize at the time was that Marlena was starting to put things together, that Jacqueline wasn't the person that she had thought that she was. Marlena's first red flag was years prior during all of the mess when Marlena was taking Jacqueline around and showing her different labs, giving her recommendations of different labs to use for what was then Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Remember the lipsticks had a JH on them. That's because the original name was Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Jaclyn still owns the trademark for Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. That is not what ended up launching. Jaclyn Cosmetics ended up launching. That trademark was licensed by Forma to make the existing Jaclyn Cosmetics but I digress. So way back then, Marlena was visiting a lab called Prisha, and Jacqueline talks about that in the text messages, that she was visiting this lab, and Marlena was in another room and saw Jacqueline and Linda walking around the lab at the same time, and she's like, wait a minute, Jacqueline wouldn't have had these connections without me telling her about Prisha. Side note, Prisha is the lab that James Charles used to create his new paints, his eye paints, but that's a whole nother thing. So that was kind of the first thing like, hmm, why is Jacqueline sharing my contacts with Linda from Morphe? Like what, what is that? Turns out now we know it's because Linda from Morphe was going to help Jacqueline to launch Jacqueline Cosmetics that Morphe ended up paying for the lipsticks to be produced. We found out that information in the court documents when Morphe declared bankruptcy. So that is why Linda and Jacqueline were at Prisha together. I hope I don't take you too far out, but this is really relevant right now in this part of the story. So Jacqueline says on the Reddit post, I didn't end up using the lab you thought I used. I went with a different lab for my lipsticks. Marlena had told Jacqueline about Prisha. That was where Jacqueline originally started getting her lipsticks made. But in Jacqueline's My Lipsticks video, she said that after production had started at one lab, she had to move her lipstick production to a different lab. And because my brand has been pushed back so many times, I actually already went through the same situation with a different lab several years ago. I went into mass production, ended up having an issue while in mass production, and then didn't launch my brand and had to go to a whole new lab because I didn't want those issues to happen again. So I canceled them and went somewhere else. The original lab was Prisha. The second lab was Oxygen Development. The connection to Marlena here is that at the time when she saw Jacqueline at Prisha, that was when Mar Makeup Geek was having some concealers made. When those concealers came in, Marlena found contaminants within the concealers and ended up having to scrap the whole thing. So she tells Jacqueline, hey, Prisha is not a good lab, you should not go there. She had also talked about some contaminants that she had found in some products from Auction Development. So there were two labs that Marlena told Jacqueline not to go to. Prisha, the first lab, where Jacqueline said there was a problem, an unknown problem, 
pulled out and then went to oxygen where the hairy lipsticks were made. Marlena warned her about both labs. So seeing Linda and Jacqueline together at the lab was the first red flag, but she was like, you know what? Maybe I'm just making a big deal over nothing. You know, if you're, if you have a friend and you really want to believe the best in them, sometimes you give them too many chances. I know that's me. That may not be you. I know a lot of y'all are, you know, you aren't as forgiving, but I get that perspective of wanting to give somebody so many chances, wanting to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. And that's what Marlena was doing at this point. So the second red flag was the Jaclyn Hill vault launch with Morphe. Now, if you were around at that time, if you happen to order those, you know that that launch was a hot stinking mess. What happened was is that Morphe sent out PR packages of the vault to influencers before the launch. So it was four eyeshadow palettes. Everybody from Jackie Ina to Thomas Halbert to Samantha March got these and reviewed them and nobody was saying it was so buttery. Like nobody was saying, like some people were saying there were some hits, there was some misses, but it was not rave reviews. So the reaction to this was that Morphe and Jacqueline decided that they were going to postpone the launch. They put this up on their social media. They explained in the post that the palettes didn't meet their standards due to inconsistent production and that as a result, they delayed the launch and would update as soon as possible. And customers were kind of rolling their eyes at this because this wasn't the first time there had been inconsistencies in an eyeshadow palette associated with Jacqueline Hill. She had gone through the same thing with Becca. Do you remember that? There was the five pan eyeshadow palette that was part of the champagne collection. When she released the face palette, there was an eye palette. They turned champagne pop into a cream and a liquid. That was the champagne collection, but the eyeshadow palette was pulled. At the time, and I had forgotten this, Jacqueline uploaded a Snapchat explaining what had happened. I did find a very grainy, terrible quality version of the Snapchat. I'll play a clip for you now. The eyeshadow palette is getting a ton of negative reviews saying that it's dry, it's patchy, it's not Becca's original beautiful formula that everyone loves so much. And I completely agree with you guys. Becca came to me and said, we want to do an eyeshadow palette. And I said, no, 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 we can't, we can't. I have so much going on. I'm working so hard on this collaboration as it is with the face palette. I have so much going on in my personal life. And they were like, no, no, no. What we want to do is we want to create an eyeshadow palette, Becca formulas, Becca colors, and we just want you to create one shade that represents champagne pop. I was like, okay, yes, love it, die. Like, sounds like such a great plan, you know? And that's what I've told you guys already is how it's Becca's palette, Becca's formulations, but I got to create champagne toast. Because there was a time crunch and they had to launch this palette with the whole collection, you know, everything we were working on had to come out at the same time, right? So they sent this palette to a different lab. They were told that this lab could produce the same exact, you know, beautiful, creamy, high pigmented shades and shadows that they were always used to, so they trusted that. I was not aware of the situation. Becca is a great company with great intentions. They did not try to do anybody dirty. They didn't try to hurt me or hurt you, but this is now where we are at. And I now have my name on an eyeshadow palette that I do not believe in. And I have promised you guys many, many, many times that I would never put my name on something that I don't believe in. I was told it was gonna be just the regular formulas. It wasn't, so because of that, we are going to be eliminating the Champagne Collection eyeshadow palette all together. And as far as me and my relationship with my subscribers go, I hope you know and I hope this proves to you that you are always my number one. Not money, not makeup, you. I'm sure I could have made money off of this palette. You know, good money, I'm sure, but I could care less. I wanna say right here now, a lot of people like, will kind of doubt collaborations and think, oh, but you didn't do any work. They came up with everything and you just slapped your name on it. I just want to say right now, that is not how this went down. And anyone from Becca will tell you that that is not how this went down. Jacqueline was only responsible for creating one shade from scratch, Champagne Toast. She did have a say in the other shades and approval. For example, Cognac right here, I requested, please make sure that there is a beautiful matte, warm, medium tone brown because you know how much I need this color in my life. So Jacqueline did have more to do with the eye shadow palette than she had insisted on. The Vault Collection finally did launch August 14th of 2018. This is a couple of weeks before the text message conversation between Marlena and Jacqueline, where Marlena lays her heart about how she feels about Jacqueline. So the Vault Collection launched and there were 
were weird things happening. People had lots of questions. There were ingredient lists taped over ingredient lists. It wasn't enough time for a palette to be sent to China and then repressed and sent back. It was just, there were clearly some lies being told. I'm actually going to let Jen Gerard explain that. This was her appearance on the sesh explaining her point of view of what happened with the vault. I think at first it was said, if I remember correctly, it was said that ever, that they were all destroyed. And then it was said that they were sent back and repressed. Okay. So in order to send something back to China and repress it, first of all, you've got to collect them from the ends of the earth. So, you know, if you work with, with uh, you know, big box stores or retailers stuff, you know that nothing happens with a quickness. Nothing. Mm. So just getting those pallets back to a warehouse where they could be picked up and even airshipped back to China would take a couple of weeks, minimally. Then you have to send them back, literally open every single pallet, repress it, right? Yeah. Clean it because there's going to be, you know, residue and stuff everywhere. And I mean, how are you, you can't repress the shades in the pallet. Right, right. right. And um, I remember that at some point, somebody took one of those pallets and took it apart to get the shades out. They're not, it wasn't one where you could just pop the shades out. Mm. You had to literally like rip the packaging apart. But we were told that the that they reuse the pallets to be eco friendly, but there's no way to reuse the pallets because you'd have to tear the. You there's video somewhere on the internet of people tearing the pallets apart to get the shades out. So if you have to tear the pallets apart to get the shades out, how are you going to use the same pallets and repress them? And then the other thing that was odd because people like you know what uh you know people like my friends and stuff would ask me, um, you know hey like how does this work? And they send me pictures. And there's like a new ingredient list, like taped over the old one. So you believe that she didn't reuse them and just recreated them and tried to pull it off as such? Well, the other thing was that there was somebody on Twitter, I think, that had the import records. And so the original import records show them coming to L.A., Mm -hmm. but there was never new import records showing them coming back. You know, anything that comes into the United States from another country, you know, a shipment bigger than, you know, let's say a bread box, for instance, yeah. is going to have a record because you have to have a customs broker to uh, ground the shipment. And that never materialized. So if they had gone back to China and come back to the U.S., there would have been a paper trail mm-hmm. to show it. Okay. Um, and that didn't exist. And then, like I said, just the timeline alone with the amount of time that it would take to do what they claim they were doing, absolutely impossible. So this was another red flag for Marlena, but there was another one, a third red flag for Marlena. And this was a lawsuit with Becca and Morphe. It was filed on August 2nd of 2018. So after the announcement of the vault, after the PR went out, but before it actually launched, Morphe actually filed a lawsuit against Becca. And this is why. Becca sent Morphe a cease and desist because of the packaging design. The cease and desist letter claimed common law trademark rights to the design on the front of the vault palettes. Becca mentioned their previous contract with Jacqueline Hill and stated that their palette with Jacqueline had extensive use, giving them common law trademark rights. They also claimed that Morphe interfered with their contracted relationship with Jacqueline. So in response, Morphe sued them, claiming that the design wasn't similar enough and that Jacqueline's name was written differently and like the white versus the gold design all of that. They also stated that Becca hadn't sold the limited edition products with Jacqueline in two years, and allegedly they couldn't keep using the design due to, quote, contractual obligations because these products had been limited edition with Jacqueline. So where Marlena gets involved in this is August 22nd, Marlena gets an email from Estee Lauder's lawyer. So Estee Lauder owned Becca at the time. Marlena gets this email like, hey, I heard you might have some information about the relationship between Jaclyn Hill and Morphe that we may be able to back use to back up our side on this trademark claim. They really wanted to know whether Jaclyn had pitched this idea of this packaging design to Marlena before she pitched it to Becca Cosmetics. And Marlena said no, that Jaclyn hadn't pitched the idea to them. So what we find out is that the Morphe lawsuit against Becca was was dropped the very next day. Court documents say that it was a notice of voluntary dismissal filed by the plaintiff, Morphe LLC, and it was a dismissal with prejudice. Marlena 
being Marlena, knowing people behind the scenes in this was on Becca's side with this. So Marlena's starting to put all these pieces together and she's like, what is going on with this person? Like, maybe I just was naive. Maybe she's really a bad person. So she was starting to put all of this together. And when Jacqueline reached out about her making that statement to Sanders Kennedy, it kind of all came out of Marlena. Jacqueline admits that this isn't their full conversation, that she had taken out pieces of the conversation, she says, because it involved other influencers and she didn't want to put their business out there. Marlena says that there was plenty she could have included because she remembers the conversation. She doesn't have the text messages anymore because they've been deleted from her phone and she didn't screenshot them because she, you know, she, screenshotting text messages from a friend. Who does that? She just didn't, she didn't keep the screenshots. So she knows that this conversation was way more than what Jacqueline actually posted that had nothing to do with other influencers that she feels Jacqueline's cherry picking this conversation. About these text messages, Jacqueline says in her Reddit post, at this point, you told me that your words had been twisted, but you did have hurt feelings around me due to our collaboration and me not reaching out as much. Granted, I think you understood why, given what I was going through personally, but I do admit I did do a terrible job at being an overall friend to you and many others in my life at that time. I've removed part of the convo, but can send to you directly, given it involves other creators. So this is what the text messages say. And it's important to note that this is happening in the wee hours of the morning. The timestamps on here are 3.30 and 4.30 in the morning. They're talking in the middle of the night. Marlena just unloads on how she's feeling. She says, if I'm being honest, Jacqueline, on a personal level, I'm extremely hurt that over the years, I have never said anything ill of you and have always supported you, supported how I could. I gave you much info to help you start your brand and even gave you direct names and labs to get you started. When you became close to, it's blacked out, but this is obviously Linda. It has to be, no one else fits here which is not a jealous thing whatsoever that you tossed me and Makeup Geek aside. You gave that info to her to use for Morphe. You and her were both at Prisha together and my team and I were there. You didn't see me because I was in somebody's office. I texted you after seeing you in LA to ask if you wanted to meet, even for coffee. You blew me off, yet showed up at the lab I connected you with another brand owner. It's not right. Even recently, after your divorce, I was willing to fly to Florida to be a support during your rough time, and you blew me off again. I know it's the personal side of things, but still it's hurtful. I have more to say regarding your recent collabs and such, but it's not my place, and I've stayed respectful of your business. I get questions so much about you, and it's hard to keep staying silent when I am taking bullets left and right. I hope you understand my point of view as well. I know you have to speak your truth because you're getting lots of heat. Please tell your mom I'm so sorry she's being dragged through this when she didn't do anything wrong and is so sweet. In response to that, Jacqueline says that she didn't stop talking about Makeup Geek because of the money, but because she wasn't excited about the recent launches. Remember I said we were going to get back to that, that she slowly stopped talking about Makeup Geek in 2017. Now the next part of this is taken out, but she says in response to it, that put a bad taste in my mouth and I distanced myself from you. And then you started hanging out with a person, we don't know, and he started spreading info about me and saying you were the source. That hurt me bad. So it is a male influencer most likely, that's what my guess would be. Now this part of the conversation cuts off here so we don't know how it ends. It picks up a little bit later where Marlena expresses that she wishes Jacqueline had told her that the timing of the Makeup Geek collab wouldn't work before the massive purchase orders were placed. I know we should have had the contract first, but we asked many times and were given strict timelines of when you could launch. This is that August date. We had to order to even make those times for you work and to then be pushed aside multiple times. It was a stack when we invested so much financially and emotionally to make it happen for you. Jacqueline then says she wishes the conversation happened a long time ago instead of being released to the public because apparently an old employee of Makeup Geek had leaked some of the emails that Jacqueline and Marlena had had or maybe it was Jacqueline and somebody else on the Makeup Geek team. Somehow some of those got leaked but Marlena says she has nothing to do with it and she had no idea that this person was leaking these emails. They were put in a drama video by T by Allie slash Truth Sleuth but Allie is also deleted all of her videos, so I can't check that either. Jacqueline then goes on to say that she wasn't aware of the price point for the palette and swears she wanted to do the Makeup Geek collab. And what I don't understand is why she's so worried about the Makeup Geek price point. It was $45 for nine shades. Her collab with Becca was five shades for $40. 
I just, I don't understand why that was an issue, but I digress. So then she goes on to apologize to Marlena if she ever felt hurt by her and that that wasn't her intention and asked Marlena if she could do anything to make it right. And they had agreed that the conversation should have happened earlier. Marlena explains to her how much each shade had cost and that she's still trying to do something with them. And then the tone seems to calm down quite a bit between the two of them. But it should be noted though that this conversation took place over three days. The date stamp on this one is three days after this conversation started. So it's good that it had some time to cool off and calm down. Everything seems like things are like coming to a point here. Jacqueline says she planned to do a video about what happened with the vault club and also what happened with Marlena. Marlena said that she's fine with that. This is when Jacqueline released a video that she titled Let's Talk, where she does talk about the vault collection and what happened with Makeup Geek. It is important to note that Jacqueline speaks extremely highly of Marlena in that video. She talks about how she's a lovely person and all kinds of positives. There's literally nothing Jacqueline says negative about Marlena in that video. But apparently Marlena found fault in some of the things that Jacqueline claimed and some of the things that she said in that video. Because a new group of text message conversation starts coming through in the Reddit thread that is clearly separate from the other ones that were exchanged after the um, Let's Talk video was launched. Now, they also talk in this about a video that Marlena had put up that she had gotten a lot of feedback, both positive and extremely negative, on the My Truth About the Beauty Community video. So there's some talk back and forth about those two videos and both of them really just not being happy with each other about the videos. Marlena's not happy with Jacqueline and Jacqueline's not happy with Marlena. So both of them agree, which I think is really smart, that they should have a phone conversation. That this is too much to just text back and forth. Let's just talk. So they sit and they plan and they set up a date to talk. The screenshots that Jacqueline puts up shows that Marlena canceled that speaking appointment with Jacqueline where they were gonna talk about all this because she had another engagement with a web developer. And even after that, Marlena says, if you need any help with your lipsticks, let me know. That's when Marlena finds out that the lipsticks are about to launch. By now, this is September 6th of 2018. The lipsticks were set to launch in January of 2019. Do you remember how I told you that Jacqueline's post is all over the freaking place? <laughs> So we need to kind of go back all over the place for a second. We've been in a nice little timeline, but we need to, to go back into Jacqueline's Reddit post because I want to share with you what she posted and then I want to share with you some other stuff to go along with that to kind of clarify what she's saying, what's truth and what's not truth. So back in the post, Jacqueline says that she didn't realize that pulling out of the collab would be such a financial hit to Makeup Geek, which even if with basic knowledge, I don't understand how that's even freaking possible. She knew that the inside packaging had been ordered she knew that the shades were already there. How could she not know that was gonna be a huge financial hit? She had literally seen the photos of the palettes of, of the shades at that point, of her custom shades. How could she not realize that? How much did she think those things cost? Like, really? But anyway, this is what she says. She says, if you had told me then that it would be a brand closing situation, we would have made it work. But from our phone conversation and the email you wrote after, I truly thought it was fine. And I can kind of see that in that Marlena was like, you know what, we'll deal with this. We'll be fine. We'll work through it. We'll figure out another way to sell these things. But to think that that was okay, I don't, I don't see how Jacqueline could have thought that that was a okay situation to put Marlena in. Unless Jacqueline was just so tunnel vision and only thinking about herself. That's all I can think of. So this is when Jacqueline says that she continued to pro promote Makeup Geek up until their conversation in 2018. But we know that that isn't true because Jacqueline said specifically that she, in the text message that she posted, that she had stopped really being interested in or being excited about, is what the word she used, the Makeup Geek products, and that's why she wasn't posting about them anymore. So her post, her text post contradicts the screenshot that she posted herself. And as a side note, this is something Marlena and I kind of sorted out together. So Jacqueline mentions that she was making affiliate commissions on the Makeup Geek website because of a favorites page that Makeup Geek had set up and she was earning commissions from that favorites page. Do you remember when Jacqueline told the story in a recent video about that she was on her break from Mac when she was on food stamps and she went upstairs to the Ulta and she was so poor she couldn't, she couldn't buy anything, but then everybody called out that there was no alt upstairs and that was a Sephora and that she had told the Sephora story many times before about being on food stamps and going up to the Sephora. 
So this happened again in this situation because the favorites page was not on the Makeup Geek website. It was on the Morphe website. But this is the twist, is that uh, Marlena's team over at Makeup Geek designed that page. Here are the screenshots of the proposed Jaclyn Hill favorites page. This is where they're going to put influencer favorites. This is the screenshot. Uh, That never actually hit the Makeup Geek website. At least we don't think it did. But... This is the page from Morphe that showed up a few weeks later. So Jacqueline must have shared the idea of the favorites pages with Morphe and they developed the exact same pages over there. Uh, Or it's just a coincidence and it just happens that the exact same time that Marlena was sharing, Marlena and her team were sharing this idea with Jacqueline that Morphe just happened to have the exact same idea at the exact same time. I guess it's possible, but I don't think it's likely. So Jacqueline didn't earn commission from a favorites page on the Makeup Geek website. She earned commission from a favorites page that she stole from the Makeup Geek team, gave to Morphe, and then earned commission from the Morphe website. Yes, that's what seems to have actually happened. I went on the Wayback Machine and I looked on Morphe's website. I found it. I was unable to find it on the Makeup Geek website. And Marlena says she doesn't think that it was actually posted there. But she does know that the timeline of Morphe starting theirs was the exact same time. And the Wayback Machine says the same thing. Then Jacqueline's Reddit post goes on to talk about the emails that were posted by Allie from Truth Sleuth that of course I can't find because Allie privated all of her videos. And then she admits that she was communicating poorly and that there was a lot of back and forth with phone exchanges and text messages. And that even after the August slash September 2018 conversation, Jacqueline says she thought that they were on good terms because Marlena was cordial and occasionally sent friendly text messages. Jacqueline admits that Marlena was a better friend to her than she was to Marlena at the time because she was, quote, not in a good place and not a good friend to anyone with everything going on, but that there was no contact for six months. And then Marlena started speaking out publicly about Jacqueline. I'm imagining that this was probably a little longer than six months because this is probably, this is just me putting two and two together after her lipstick launch in 2019 because that would have been like eight or nine months after all of this where Marlena started really speaking out about Jacqueline. I honestly don't know if Marlena said anything before that, but I do know that she was speaking out about the hairy lipsticks when all of that happened. At this point, Jacqueline claims that Marlena blocked her, but doesn't say specifically where she was blocked. Jacqueline acknowledges Marlena's anger and wishes she handled things differently. She says she apologized many times for the Makeup Geek collaboration, but this is her publicly apologizing, quote, writing in a public forum where I know I am not liked and the people in here will spend the time tearing every word apart. This is not me trying to have my fans jump in quickly for public support. I don't want anyone sending you hate. That won't make the situation better for anyone. I'm just trying to paint a clearer picture as to what went on from my perspective as well as take accountability. Then she closes the post by admitting to her many mistakes that she never intended to hurt Jen or Marlena and she finishes with quote however even though that wasn't my intention that's what happened and I apologize for that. I wish you both the best in terms of Jen continuing on with Gerard Cosmetics and Marlena with your new brand. So just like Jen Marlena also responded to Jen. Jacqueline's post on the Reddit thread. Here it is on the screen for you. She says she appreciates the response, but she's tired of the gaslighting and the cherry picking parts of the conversation to fit her narrative. Marlena's most hurt by Jacqueline taking the information and contacts that she gave to her about starting Jacqueline Cosmetics and giving that information to Linda from Morphe, taking Linda to the labs where Marlena had connected her. She says she wasn't trying to harbor hard feelings, even though she knew the financial wreckage that would follow. She says, I took the hit in silence and made the best situation I could from it because I knew I should have made you sign that contract. But I tried trusted you as a friend, not just for a business, hard lesson that I'm glad I learned as it made me a wiser person today, so I'm grateful for that lesson. It wasn't the financial devastation that hurt the most anyways. It was the betrayal of you using me to get information and sharing that with a competitor, then kicking me to the curb. I told you this privately, Jacqueline, before I ever spoke up publicly, and your response was, what do you want me to do, Marlena? That's not a real apology. Marlena continues talking about the Becca situation, the vault, the vegan situation with the white Morphe palette, which is a whole different story that we could tell that we're not going 
going to tell today. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. And then that she does not own Jacqueline Cosmetics. She realizes that she thought she knew Jacqueline, but now knows who she really is and has been that way all along. Marlena says that Jacqueline could have contacted her privately, even if she was blocked in one place. She connects this with Jacqueline saying she reached out to Kaylin Nich Nicholson about the cozy situation, which Kaylin absolutely denies ever happened. Marlena ends with, I wish you no ill will and finally have gotten the closure I need by speaking up. I'm tired of seeing other women hurt as well until your actions align with your words. They are just that, hollow words. So that is what happened. <laughs> That is the quick summary of what happened between 2014 and now. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. How are you feeling? How are you doing after all of that information? What are you thinking? How are you processing this information? Where are you at? Please let me know in the comment section. Really the big reason why I made this video is I just wanted to put the timeline together. I wanted to organize everything in a way that was digestible because the things that have been coming out have been so mushy all over the place and I'm hoping I put it together in a functional enough timeline with visuals and everything so that you could understand what's happening and that you don't have to sort through it yourself. But again, if there is anything that seems like it's not quite right, let me know in the comment section down below and I will put it in a pin post if I find that I was not correct. But at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and also help each other in all kinds of ways, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section down below about all the information that I presented here. I know that it's a lot of information and I know some of you are, are going to be disappointed that you're not getting your regular episode of What's Up In Makeup, but I promise you, I promise you with my entire soul, all of that information still exists and I will get you the real show. I just, I didn't have enough hours in the day to do every Everything. and sorting out this timeline was a hot mess and took a really long time. Either way, I hope that you are able to join us in live chat today. It's gonna be happening at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna be hanging out, probably talking about this because it is absolutely fascinating to me and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on everything I shared with you today. If you would like to join us, I would love to see you there, but if you miss it, if you can't make it, that is absolutely no problem. It's very easy to find on the replay. You can go over to my channel page, click on my videos and click on the video that says live chat for this week. That's one way. The other way is if you're subscribed, it should just be hanging out in your subscription feed. The other way is the What's Up and Makeup live chat podcast, which is linked below. You can now listen to podcasts on YouTube music. So you can subscribe to the podcast and you will get them in your YouTube music podcast feed. So with that being said, if you would like to hang out a little bit longer right now, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Up and Makeup. It is right there. YouTube should be recommending the top one based on your viewing history but if you do need to go i'll get it this was a long ass video i'll get it thank you for hanging out as long as you did and mad love to you i will see you in a video very very soon bye